For this one, we've got a CGC mail call unboxing. Hi everyone and welcome back to Still Only 35 Cents. This is issue eight. And for this one, as I mentioned at the beginning, we've got a CGC mail call unboxing. A number of books here, some from claim sale purchases, some from eBay, and one is a mechanical error return from CGC. And I'll explain the story behind that as we get into the video. Before we get started, as always, click that subscribe button if you like the content here. Leave a comment down below if you really wanna make a comment on some of the books that you see. Uh, here give us your view on what you think of the grade what you think of the book and the story behind it and ring that notification bell to get uh, Access and view future content from the channel. So with that, let's kick off the unboxing All right So first up, let's kick off with the mechanical error that I got back from CGC now This is a two book submission which was incorrectly labeled. Um, so I'll crack them open and show you the books inside and Take you through a little bit of the history on each of one of these books First off the list, so this is a book that I had signed by Chris Claremont. This is Iron Fist number nine. Um, this is the Susha News pedigree. Now, when I first submitted this, they didn't actually label the pedigree. And so I had to send it back uh, along with proof again from the, from the, um, from, I think it was Metropolis Comics that I bought this from with the proof of the pedigree they very very kindly managed to fix this all returned um, the issue that i always find though with signature series pedigree books is unlike normal pedigree books you don't get that beautiful gold label that you would have seen in other videos where i've got pedigree books i would like in the future if cgc would consider doing what they do with other books where there's like a little strip across the top highlighting the pedigree but they have at least now notated the pedigree on this book. This is the first appearance of Chaka. And as I say, I bought this sort of, you know, knew the grade was going to be around about 9.2. Didn't expect any sort of um, bump um, back because obviously that's how I received it in the first place. But great to have the Chris Claremont signature on this um, classic book from the Iron Fist run. So that's the first one. Super happy with that. The next one is a super key that I, I, I pick up whenever I can. And this is issue 337 of Thor. Now this one is notable obviously because it's the first appearance of Beta Ray Bill. Again, I had this signed by Walt Simonson and this came back as a 9-4. However, CGC didn't notate that this was the Canadian price range. Um, and so we reached out to customer service. They said, send it back with the other book. And so they've replaced the label with the Canadian price variant. Everything's all in order. And it's got a great placement of Walt Simonson's signature on the front. Super happy with the grade. I don't think there's very many Canadian price variants, certainly not those signed by Walt. And so it's still, whilst I would have liked a higher grade, super happy with this one. I did previously submit this and I think it did, I did have it cleaned and pressed in the previous submission when it got the 9.4. Um, so it went from a 9.0 to a 9.4. So there was some issues that managed to resolve. So super happy with this grade and a great book to have. First appearance of Peter Ray Bill. You can't go wrong with this book. It's a stunning cover and a classic book to own. So really happy with that. Next on the list from Mint Hunter comic. I've been searching, trying to complete my Tomb of Dracula in high grade. One of the books in here I've been looking for, I have a 9.4 of this book, but James had managed to score a 9.8. And so when I saw that, I had to grab it. Tomb of Dracula, issue 70, the last issue in the series, graded at a 9.8 with white pages. As I say, I'm looking to collect and finalize my Tomb of Dracula. Um, collection. I think I'm missing two books now from the full run. I am also trying to grade or get highest grade copies of these books as possible. Super happy to get this one. As I say, I've got two copies of this myself. One of them is a 9.4 that I graded from my own collection. Um, so I'm going to replace that with this one. So my 9.4 will be going into a claim sale or a trade. 
But yeah, this is a great book to add, especially with that white pages. Super tough to find high grade copies of this book. So that will take pride of place in the Tomb of Dracula collection. And then the other book that I bought, and again, I want to really make a good, great shout out to, to James at Mint Hunter Comics. When he listed it on the claim sale, uh, he did say it was signed by George Perez. 9.6, got the George Perez label, looked great. So I, I pulled the trigger. Um, unfortunately, when I arrived, or when it arrived, realized that it was actually signed by Marv Wolfman. So reached out to James, we sorted it all out, all good, and super happy to have in the collection. Um, it's a great book, um, most notable because it's the first preview of the Noon Teen Titans. Now, there's been a few discussions online around the relevancy for New Teen Titans, and I really believe in the longevity of this book. You've got to think that there's a whole bunch of fans, uh, younger kids that have grew up with Teen Titans Go, and at some point there's going to be recognition of this book for that. So this for me is a long-term hold. Um, it's a great book to add to the collection because I'm building out, again, similar to the Tomb of Dracula, building out an early George Perez New Teen Titans um, collection to have it signed by Marv Wolfman is um, you know a bonus would have been great to have George Perez and I have also reached out and brought another signature series book uh, of the same issue that is signed by George Perez so I'm considering whether I get that signed by Marv Wolfman as well and also potentially Jim Starlin to sort of cover it off in terms of the key creators that were involved in this particular book but I'm really happy with this and thanks to James for letting me pick this up because it's a great book so with that let's kick off onto the super books that I got back and these are going to really blow your mind. Now these next two books have got a little bit of a story behind them and they are grails of mine in terms of getting into the collection so um, for those of you who don't know I'm a uh, you probably said in the earlier in the video I'm a big Bronze Age horror particularly Marvel uh, horror books and in particular Werewolf by Night. So I was very keen and trying to see if I could get some form of signature or some form of memorabilia from Mike Plug, who created Werewolf by Night and did most of the art in it in those early issues. So recently, Mike, I've been following Mike Plug on his Facebook group and he's been signing some books, which is unusual for Mike because apparently he's, he very rarely signs books, very rarely does cons. And so I was very keen to sort of secure a signature from him. But in terms of Mike's posts, of late he's been basically getting, signing his own personal collection. And so there's two books here that are not only signed by Mike Plug, but they actually come from his personal collection. And I reached out to his agent and managed to secure these. So, so this is Werewolf by Night number three. Uh, it's a 9.2, but again, 9.2, but it is from Mike Plug's personal collection now. And as you can see here, it's a great looking book. Very happy with it. The placement of Plug's signature is on Werewolf by Night's leg on the bottom part, but a great book to own, and I'm really happy that I was able to secure this. So having books from Mike Plug's own personal collection it's, it's a stunning piece for me to go into the collection. So really super happy with this one. But the one that I'm really most proud of is the one that came shortly after. Whilst I would have liked a Marvel Spotlight number two, I do own that book, but not signed. This is the next best thing. Um, so this is a 9.4 Werewolf by Night number one, signed by Mike from his own personal collection. Beautiful, beautiful 9.4, beautiful presenting book. The Plug signature is on the trash can here at the front. So sort of placement on all of the books that he's been doing have been stunning in terms of the way that he's done it. I think there was a, I missed out on the, on one of the Dracula and Werewolf by Night issues that he signed and the placement on there was on the wall at the bottom. So all of the placements are, are beautifully done. It presents really well, and again, to have the first in-title Werewolf by Night comic book signed by Mike from his personal collection is a super, super thing to add to the collection, and I'm 
absolutely stunned and happy and really glad to get this so wanted to save this for a little while for further viewers so you could see this book but yes werewolf by night from mike plug's personal collection a brilliant brilliant result so that's it for this one a really short brief cgc mail call unboxing but Hopefully you really enjoyed those books. I know I got a kick out of opening some of those, particularly the Mike Plug ones. So as I say, if you can just hit that subscribe button down below, if you like the content, hit that thumbs up and please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the books. Let me know, you know, if you've got any books like that, particularly anything from Mike Plug, I'd be really keen to hear what you've got in your collections. And then please hit that notification bell. We've got plenty more unboxings, videos like this. We've just done an interview with Al Milgram and we've got an upcoming interview with Alan Murray, who was the Marvel UK art director. I'll put a few links to some of our other videos at the end of this video, but until I see you next time, take care.